welcome to the English with Kirsty podcast from www.englishwithkirsty.com. Here I'll be sharing with you tips, information and other learning resources so that you can improve your business English. Welcome to episode 196 of the English with Kirsty podcast. This episode is one of my solo episodes and I'm going to talk about communication and effective communication. Um, it's based on an article that I wrote for a German website. So originally the audience was um, German speakers who also use English for business. But now I'm going to broaden it out a bit because when I when I think about this, even though the examples are based on the German language and what I've seen people doing in German companies, the, the points that I'm making are more general and they can be applied whatever your first language is because they're, they're about types of behaviour and, and things that we do that may not necessarily be helpful. So I'm going to use the German examples because I, I know about them and, and I've seen more examples from German speaking countries because I have a lot of customers there. But whatever your first language is, you can still think about this, um, particularly if you're using English as an international language or a business language for communication. And the interesting thing about language is that it changes. You only have to think of the, the last couple of years and all the new words that we now have in our vocabulary that we didn't have before the pandemic. Um, language is constantly changing and new words are being added and other words are becoming less popular, and less useful. Um, and I often see that in some cases, English words are, are used in business when there is a perfectly good word in, in the other language as well. But um, people sometimes choose to prefer, uh, sometimes choose to use the English word. And that's a personal choice. Sometimes it's just the word becomes accepted. Other times people make that choice about whether to use the other word or the English word. Um, but as long as everybody understands that, I guess that's okay. The problem is when people, um, when words take on a life of their own and they, they mean something um, in their original language, but another language, um, they evolve when used in, in another language, in another context. And this can be a problem because it might confuse people who aren't aware of how the word has evolved or what it what it means in that context. And it's good to be aware of some of those because... Um, you don't want to confuse people. You don't want people to be wondering what you're talking about. Sometimes it's obvious. It just sounds a bit um, unusual if you haven't heard it before. But sometimes it, I have had to stop and think, what, what does that person actually want to say to me? So that's that's not a good thing. Um, and maybe if you're aware of it, you will continue to use it with, with the colleagues who, who know what you're talking about. But sometimes it's just be worth being aware that not everything that sounds English is something that will make sense to somebody who has English as a first language. And that's what we're talking about today. So either individual words or ways of writing, ways of speaking that, that may not make sense to, to somebody like me whose who's first language is, is English. So I have 10 of them and I'm going to go through them fairly quickly. Um, and I'll spend a bit more time on the ones that can be applied more uh, across the board and that aren't just examples of, of things that you might hear in or see in Germany. So the first one is something that came up more and more in the, in the last couple of years because a lot of people were working from home. And that's what we say in, in um, we would say somebody's working from home or at home, based at home. Then we have remote working, all of these things. But what we don't say <laughs> is that we're working in the home office. And I can't tell you how many times I've heard that um, either in in German conversations or in English conversations with people who are based in German speaking countries. Because for us here in the UK, the Home Office is a government department. It deals with um, policing, immigration, um, the criminal justice service. It, it's, it's a part of the government um, and it's not the place where we work. So, okay, I would understand that, I guess, because I've heard it so many times, but. Um, it's not, um, it's not something that we say, we don't say we're, we're in the home office. We say we're working from home, we're, we're out of the office, we're away from the office, we are um, 
I heard smart working the other day. I quite like that. It's not something that's a common term, but I think that's that's nice. That that means more of a kind of hybrid working. But we're not in the home office. I'm not saying people shouldn't say that, but I just think people should be aware that that's not that's not what most people say. <laughs> most people will understand though. Um, the second one is a bit more confusing, and I don't know if it happens in other languages as well. I've only seen it in German. Um, for those who don't speak German, sometimes people abbreviate the greetings in German to the letters, the first letters of the, the words. So um, not usually in business communications, because people then would, would write the words out properly. But if people are in a hurry or if they're writing um, a text message or something like that, sometimes they abbreviate the greeting to the, the first letters of the words. And because they sometimes do that in German, they do it in English as well. So we get things like K-R, B-R at the end of the email, which means kind regards, best regards. But the first time I saw it, I didn't know what it meant. So I had to ask, what's this? Um, um, and it's not something that we tend to do. Well, it's not something that I've ever seen anyone do um, in English. So if you do do that or, or something like that, you may, maybe the person won't ask because it's right at the end of the email. Maybe they won't even notice. But it's something that, that we, we don't do generally in English. Um, so it's something that, they might not understand. And that's a whole other debate about greetings and the lack of them, especially um, a lot of people here in the UK don't put, put greetings at the end of their email, not because they're annoyed or particularly unfriendly. It's just something that people don't bother to do. And I think more emphasis is placed on that um, in other parts of the world. Um, and it's important to understand that because you may think somebody is being impolite when really they're just behaving as they as they always would so I I use greetings at the end of the emails because I think it's friendly um but not everybody does here uh number three had to be in here because it's a list about German words um and it's a really old one and everybody knows it but if everybody knew it then you'd think people would stop using it um this is actually incorrect um because the <clears throat> when we call somebody we use a phone. It's people you maybe say, you could say smartphone, you could say whatever type of phone you have. Sometimes people still say mobile phone, but because that's the, the kind of phone that most people have nowadays, we don't usually bother. But what it isn't is a handy, because handy is an adjective and it means that something is convenient. Um, it's handy to have a, a shop nearby. If you forget something, you can go and buy your food or milk or whatever, chocolate there. Um, but it's not correct to call your phone a handy. But many, many people um, in German do because they do in German and then they, they do in English as well. But in English, that, that isn't correct. And just another one that's specifically German, so we won't spend a lot of time on it um, because I don't want to exclude people, is the, um, a Beamer is a type of car. It's it's not a projector if you, have, if you want other people to... Um, to, to see something in a, a large screen in a, in a meeting is a projector. Number five is a bit more, um, a bit less German specific because many other languages have a plural form of the word information. So, but in English, we treat it as a plural anyway. So we can't have informations and we can't have an information. Um, you can have some information or a piece of information or no information or a lot of information, but informations with an S is wrong because it's already plural. So you, you can't add an S to something that's already plural. If you want to make it singular, then you have to say like a, an interesting piece of information or a fact or something like that um, because it's, it's already a plural word and therefore it's wrong when you add, like for further informations, click here, I, I see that a lot, but it's, it's not correct because in English it's already a plural word. Number six has nothing to do with business English, but I like horses, so it, it gets mentioned here. Um, and that is a specifically German thing, but we have, for us, a pony is a, a small horse. Not a, a child, like a, a baby horse, but a, a horse that isn't very big. Um, and you can have a ponytail, a hairstyle where you um, collect the hair together and, and bind it together. Like if, if you don't want it in your face or if it's a windy day, you might put your hair up in a ponytail. But the um, 
I don't have one because my, my hair is all going back. But if you have some shorter hair at the front, um, above your eyes, across your forehead, that's a fringe. It's, it's not a pony. Number seven is, I wanted to use this because it's an example of, of where communication falls down sometimes, but it's an example of how using different terminology for, for or using the same terminology for different things can really cause confusion if you have people who use that terminology differently. So um, for me, for example, using my website, my homepage is um, the first page that you get to on my website. If you haven't come through a link or something like that, it's the main page on my website, which for me is um, www.englishwithkirsty.com. And the homepage is only that page, that, that front page, that initial page. Um, but many people um, from the uh, German speaking clients that, that I work with, many people use this term to mean the entire website. And that is technically wrong, <laughs> because if you look for any definition on, on what, what does homepage mean, it, it doesn't mean the entire website, because that's the website. My website is all the content, the blog, the podcast the information about my courses, all the other things on the website, that's my website and the content on my website, but the home page is only, only this one first page. So if I could tell you to visit my home page, I, I could do that because maybe I want you to see the, the courses and the video and things like that. But if I want you to visit my website, then that's what I would say. And if people say there's information on the home page, but what they mean is it's buried somewhere in the website, then that's that's misleading. Um, because I would go to the home page and not find it there and think, OK, well, they they lied to me or they made a mistake or that there's a problem. I wouldn't think to look on the rest of the website because you said it was on the home page and it isn't. So this is where um, it's important to, to think about what something actually means and what other people will know that it means. Um, and just don't don't use homepage if you mean the entire website. Um, number eight is a specifically German one again. So the word mobbing, um, we would say bullying. Um, you know, like in a in a work environment or in a school environment, if people are treating an individual badly, making life harder for them, speaking to them inappropriately, doing things to upset them. This is this is bullying them. Mobbing does mean um, like to crowd around something or someone, but not in the same way. The word has taken on a, a life of its own in German, but it, it doesn't mean the same for anyone who doesn't speak German and who isn't aware of that. For me, it's not so difficult because I, I do speak both languages and I'm aware of some of these differences. But um, if you're using English with people, um, from different countries or even if you're we're not I'm talking about native English speakers here because you know I am one but um, it may be that that the other people who are using English as a, an additional language from outside of Germany won't understand these things either and the same if, if you're based in another part of the world there may be things that make sense to everyone in your office and everyone in the country where you are um, but there may not be um, a type of English that's understood by everybody who uses English. Um, number nine is also a, a specific German one, but for some reason um, the word peeling has come to mean like scrub, like face scrub, body scrub, like all these things that you do for, for wellness. It's not peeling, it's, it's a scrub. Um, and this isn't just an example of a word that sounds, it sounds English and it looks English, but um, the first time I saw it I wasn't entirely sure what they were talking about because that's not how we, we use that word um, generally. And number 10 is um, something that I've I've had to pick up on because I've, I've worked with people working in graphic design or website design. Um, and it looks like an English word. And in fact, it is an English word, but it's not not what we would say. So when you are going to have some photos taken, I'm going to get some new photos for the English with Kirsty website, for example, later this month, and we will have a photo shoot. It's not a photo shooting. And it's definitely not a shooting um, because, yeah, shooting is, is what happens when somebody 
shoots somebody or something it's um it is an english word you could you could hear about um a shooting in in the news but it's it's not what we do with cameras and it's not what we do when we're taking photos so that's just a photo shoot and it doesn't need this stray ing that that keeps being added to it i don't know if that happens in other languages too when um when english is is being used but i've definitely seen it a number of times in german and it's it's incorrect it's not a variation it's just um it's just incorrect. So uh, the the correct term is is a photo shoot. Um, if you want to see the article about these words, um, I will link it um, because it was on um it's on a website that's in German, but they do publish some um, some articles in English. Um, I cooperate with this site. Um, it's a site where you can find jobs. Um, it's a German site where you can find jobs for people who work with languages. So if that's you, it may be of interest to you. Um, but also you can you can just have a look at the news articles there as well. Some of them are in German, but there are other articles aside from mine that are also in English. So I will add the link to that. And if you want to receive information about the podcast or about other interesting articles or resources that I found on the internet in relation to English or communication in general or language learning you can also sign up for the English with Kirsty newsletter which comes out once a month so it won't be filling up your inbox every every week um you can do that by going to the show notes page which is um www.englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast slash episode 196 or actually there's um there's a form on, on every page even on my home page englishwithkirsty.com and you can sign up for the newsletter there. But if you want to see the article, then you need to go to the show notes page, which is englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast slash episode 196. I hope that was helpful. I know that not everybody here is a German speaker, but some of these things are things that we can think about anyway, things that, that may be obvious to us, but might not be obvious to, to everyone else that we're speaking to or working with. And the same goes for us too here in the UK. Um, there are things that, that that make sense culturally because we're perhaps aware of them that, that wouldn't make sense to to everybody else if you're in an international meeting, for example. So it's something that we all have to think about and we all have to be aware of who is, is with us in our meetings, whom will who will see our um, messages, who the messages are for, and to make sure that we're commuting communicating in a style that's appropriate for them. Hope that's useful. Have a good week and have fun learning English. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the English with Kirsty podcast. If you have any questions or comments, my email address is kirsty at englishwithkirsty.com or you can go to www.englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast where you'll find information about the individual episodes.